Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you guys my Destiny board deck profile for June 2017. I've been actually working on this deck for quite a while now, and I thought I finally came up with a you know good enough build to bring you guys a deck profile. Now the whole point of the deck is just to straight up get out your uh, final uh, written out using the Destiny board and winning the game from there. Now it's a complete fun deck because it is kind of easy to stop if you don't have Dark Sanctuary on the field which protects your Destiny board from spells like Twin Twister or MST or anything that'll get rid of any of your Destiny board pieces because once that uh, happens the deck pretty much botches from there but still pretty cool I did get the uh, playoff uh, a couple of the times that I did play it what makes it you know uh, playable in the least so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Uh, we're starting off with just a couple of the uh, more important spell and traps of the deck. I run three Destiny Board, which is your main uh, trap card of the deck. Uh, basically with this card, when this card and all four spirit messages with different names are placed on your field, you win the duel. And once uh, per turn during your opponent's end phase, you place one spirit message card uh, from your hand or deck in the spell and trap card zone face up in the proper order of I-N-A-L. And when any spirit message cards or destiny boards you control leaves the field, send all spirit message cards and destiny boards you control to the graveyard. So that's the one bad part about this. You have to consistently protect them on the field, which Dark Sanctuary is probably your best bet to do so, uh, protecting them from card effects and battles since it special summons once to the field. Uh, but other than that, you just have to be fast and consistent for the four turns because hopefully you'll get destiny board off uh, turn one and then come end phase for your opponent and you just have to play it off there stalling and making sure you get it out and that's your best play to go off of with this deck and for the uh, spirit messages I run one of each so I N A L uh, the only reason I run one of each is I tried two of each in the deck and it was incredibly inconsistent I would draw so many uh, of these uh, hand off and I wouldn't be able to do anything to protect them I would get the uh, sets off from my hand or field I would basically special summon the one from my deck and not have anything else to do to protect them and basically be me just sitting there with my destiny board waiting for my opponent to pop them which they would eventually do so running one of each it's the best gamble you can play since you can be from the hand or deck uh, you know drawing these won't make them dead draws you just got to have more protection cards with this deck than you know the actual pieces to make it as consistent as can be. And for the monsters, I run three card card D. Uh, this card is just for draw power since you run a lot of traps and hand traps as well just to protect yourself from attacks and damage. This card just helps to draw what you need for the recommended cards. Um, it is literally the only normal summon that I'll do in this deck because the rest of it's just drawing out, uh, which is why I run three of those. Also, three Swift Scarecrow. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Dark Sanctuary, which we'll get to in a bit, that card basically lets your opponent bypass your spirit message monsters on the field for a direct attack, meaning they can, you know, hit you directly, which this will count for the direct attack uh, discard for ending the battle phase. And I didn't have any Battle Vader. I think they actually went with my Lyralusk deck when I traded it. So I have the three Speedroid Menko. If you have Battle Vader, definitely run that instead of this card in this deck, just because a little more uh, consistent with the ending the battle phase. All that Menko does is switch them to defense mode, which, you know, will stop the attacks uh, for the most part. But still, um, you know, it's just in one of those plays where uh, it's better off using a Battle Vader and just ending the battle phase in general. And that's it for all the monsters we play. Like I said, just hand trap stall and the card card Ds are the main things we go for. Uh, moving on to spells, I run three Dark Sanctuary. Uh, this card is your main one in the deck. You want to open up Destiny Board and this card when you go for your plays. Uh, if a Spirit Message card will be placed on your field with Destiny Board, you can special summon it as a normal monster, fiend type, level one, attack zero, defense zero instead. And if you do, it is unaffected by the card effects except Destiny Board and cannot be targeted for attacks. Uh, but it does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. When an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, you toss a coin, and if the result is heads, negate the attack. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the current attack of the monster they control. So it helps through the fact that it protects your destiny uh, board and your spirit messages just from being destroyed, which is your number one thing you want to go off of there. And it is a field spell, so it doesn't itself take up any of the spots in which the destiny board can be placed. But the monster uh, fact also helps because before we had Dark Sanctuary, we we had to completely rely on, you know, just hopefully successfully getting all four 
um, spirit messages after the destiny board in our spell and trap card zone, which uh, the more you did that, the less spell and trap cards you could activate. But the fact that you can special summon them now, I know in the anime they did it, so uh, Bakura could basically just, you know, have additional monster and spell uh, spots to use with this card, because this card just broke every rule in the anime. But I like the idea that they did with it, so I like uh, the approach. Also run three magical mallets for the fact that, um, yes, it's fine if you draw the spirit messages from your deck to your hand, but putting them back and getting more uh, relevant cards uh, helps with the magical mallet, just because you can search them out with the destiny board, and this card can also, in fact, search the destiny board. There's actually one uh, game where I drew this and all four of the spirit messages, and which would basically left me as an open target, so I used this, put back the spirit messages, and drew a pretty more relevant hand. Also, three terraforming. I know um, I only run three of the Dark uh, Sanctuary card, but this card, you need to draw that card to make this deck as relevant as can be. So three terraforming, just so you can grab it even more consistently. Uh, same goes for uh, Pot of Duality. Three of those, uh, no special summoning with this deck whatsoever. All of it takes place during your opponent's turn, so pretty standard there. Same with the uh, one Arp Star Goblin and the one Day of Peace, just for more draws, this one especially, so you don't have to waste any of your hand traps the next turn and you'll still get your placement of the Spirit Message. And as for traps, I'm running... I wanted to run three Drowning Mirror Force, but I only have the two, so I substituted in one Mirror Force just for the direct attack. Shuffling back takes a lot of resources out of your opponent, and if they put all their, you know, go into one direct attack and they don't see this coming, that can hit out a lot of their resources and not have anything to make a comeback, and then they'll just have to end up facing the fact that they're going to get final uh, Spirit Messaged. Uh, very quickly. If you don't have the Drowning Mirror Forces, run three Mirror Force, or you can even go for the three Reckless Greed just for more draw power. That kind of slowed me down in my plays though, which is one reason I didn't want to go for that, and this trap just came in much more handy. Also, two Grand Horn of Heaven, just um, like this card because it skips the main phase, meaning your opponent can't do too too much more, and then they gotta rely on their battle phase. That one card draw is kind of, you know, sketchy, but still helps with the stopping of the special summons. Same with the one Solemn Warning that I run as well, because uh, life points aren't really as needed in the deck. And one Skill Drain, just to help additional monster effects be put to a halt. And three Threatening Roar to finish off the deck, just for more stall, especially since, you know, you can place this card, and if you don't have the Sanctuary, you can use this card, then have your open spot for the Spirit Message at the end of the turn. Uh, no extra deck, because it would be near impossible, unless you really wanted to go for those rank 1 plays uh, with this deck otherwise. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Once again, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, Kira Twig out.